no one cooks the way we cook and no one has the bounty of raw ingredients that we have. So to live and cook here is not only an exceptional experience, but people worldwide know about it. As I look back on my youth, I realized the gift God gave to False Family. I grew up learning how to fish, gather seafood, and cook every day of my life. Join me, Chef John Falls, as I cook up dishes honoring the age-old traditions of seafood and Louisiana's world-famous cuisine on hooks, flies, and alibis. Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924 and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. One of the most unique freshwater fish you can ever hope to catch is the alligator gar. The alligator gar has been around since prehistoric days and it's somewhat of a living fossil because it has retained its characteristics from its earliest ancestors a hundred million years ago. Its broad snout resembles an alligator as well as its sharp teeth. In fact, mature alligator gars have two rows of teeth in their upper jaw, which they use to capture prey, including small fish, mammals, and even waterfowl. An alligator gar was recently caught in Mississippi that measured eight feet long and weighed over 300 pounds. The gar was once considered a nuisance fish, but today attitudes have changed as researchers have discovered the role that alligator gar plays within the ecosystems they inhabit. These garfish are being grown in ponds and studied by university researchers such as Dr. Elise Ferrara of Nickel State University in Thibodeau, Louisiana. But it's uh, one of our most important fishes in the water because it's a top predator. And we also like to look at it as a sentinel species for our coastal habitats. As we lose these habitats and have saltwater intrusion moving into areas that were once fresh uh, or slightly saline, uh, we lose juvenile and spawning habitats for this fish. So we like to say, as the coast goes, so does the alligator gar. Oh, so, so does the fish. Traditionally, Native Americans used the scale of the alligator gar for arrowheads and breastplates. To the Cachada Indians, alligator gar are a symbol of strength and survival. Even today, members of the United Homa Nation make beautiful, ornate jewelry from the scales of this unique fish. The skin of the garfish has been tanned to make durable leather for handbags and shoes. Gar oil, in fact, was once used by early people as an insect repellent. The firm white meat of the alligator gar is quite flavorful as well and is still eaten today. Smoked gar tasso has been made for generations by members of the Homa Nation and is used as a seasoning meat in gumbo, stews, and vegetables. Great Eagle, spirit of the air, protect the, the east. Great Coyote, great spirit of the water, protect the south. Great Bear, spirit of fire, protect the west. Great Buffalo, Spirit of the earth, protect the north. Great eagle, great coyote, great bear, great buffalo, stay and guard your corners. Great eagle, 
great coyote, great bear, great buffalo. Thank you. Let's be honest, y'all. An alligator gar is a pretty intimidating looking fish. Heck, it has more armor and teeth showing than most fishermen. But once you taste it, you know it's an unbelievable delicacy that you can use in many dishes. Tasso just happens to be one of the best things to do with gar fish. Y'all, I'm here in Dulac, Louisiana, still on the banks of this beautiful bayou with Janie Luster. And of course, she's a member of the United Homa Nation Tribe. And we just had a beautiful blessing here. Tell us a little bit about smudging. Well, it's a tradition with the Native Americans all over the country. It's a blessing. It's also a cleansing. And they make a, a smoke. It's in a, 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 a clam shell, in a sense. Right. And they put tobacco, sage, Sometimes sweet grass um, and cedar and tobacco in it. And, and, and with the eagle feather, I mean, what a beautiful yes, dance. What uh -huh. a beautiful dance. And it's, a, it's just a matter of prayer and cleansing of the yes. area that you're in. Yes, well, cleansing of the area and also of the people. And who was the, the, the wonderful gentleman doing that? Peter uh, Verde. We call him Gene. Gene. <laughs> Peter, we call him Gene. Well, he did a great job. Now, you know, out of this bayou come some pretty interesting uh, animals. Take a look at this garfish. Now, this is about 100 pounds of garfish, a very famous fish in these bayous, used by Native Americans and Cajuns as well for a lot of different applications. First of all, the meat is great smoking. I have some here. But uh, we also pan fry it, make boulettes out of it, or balls that we cook in tomato sauce with, with like spaghetti. But uh, what uh, you do some very interesting things with the scales. Tell us about that. Well, uh, I learned from my mom, it's a family tradition in a right. sense. Mom made flowers. Back in 1944, when they first got married, they went trapping in the camp area, the lake area, and she wanted flowers for her uh, table. She would take the blue clay, the tag grass, as we call it, right. and form a little ball and put the scales in it. So I guess in the early uh, 70s, my dad had gotten a big garfish, right. and that's when I started. Uh, the scales, it was bigger than this one. And the scales were so beautiful. I said, oh, you know, what can you do with that? And so mom shared her story about the flowers that she right, right. made. So you make jewelry out of it. You have crosses. And this is just continuing the tradition of uh, things that were done within the nation for so many years. And I mean, what a beautiful use of oh, the yes. scales of the fish. So you're basically making use of the whole animal. Correct. Now also, uh, you brought this beautiful little black moss bird that I think was made by your, was this made by your daughter? By your my niece? daughter, Anne. Uh, by your daughter. And now this is another tradition of the the homa. Yes. I mean, just using the black moss of the trees yes, of the swamp. Yes, we're probably the first people to use black moss, and we probably the last people to still be using it because we still make moss dolls. Uh, the other people that were using it were furniture makers to right, stuff, sure. even the. Um, Model T Ford. Right, for the seats of the, the Ford. The seats yeah. were stuff. You know what I love? You know what I love about Jane and the entire culture? Uh, uh, the Homa really has such a pride. 17,000 members living in these swamp lands of Louisiana. And it's all about preservation of the culture, preservation of the food ways, even the turtle shell that I've always enjoyed seeing, <laughs> the turtle mask. Let me tell you, it represents the, not the moth, the 12 month, but the 13 moons ah, that Indian the people use the moon to do everything by. And on the turtle shell, there's 13 large squares representing those moons. Well, and on the edge is the days, the well, little squares. It's, it's just incredible how you keep all of the cultures alive. Now we take in the meat of the garfish. Yo, that, that you wouldn't imagine how beautiful the meat is on an animal that looks this vicious, but it is. Now, we're going to make the tasso. Now, tell me if I'm right. This is your recipe. I'm using yes. salt. I've uh, just taken the meat and just kind of sliced it nice and thin. We have, of course, cracked pepper. Now, are there many mm -hmm. different recipes for this, or y'all just oh, kind of yes. everybody has their uh, own? Like I say, basically, everybody's got a rep recipe similar to the Ooh. gumbo. Right. Uh, my mom used to smoke it over a clothesline, and she would use a drum right. to make a fire and smoke it. And Miss Lois, who has the restaurant here, remembers that her neighbor 
did it in the same manner. Wow, so uh, right on the clothesline with yes. hanging. Now we've uh -huh. taken it, we've added salt, pepper, granulated garlic. We added Worcestershire sauce and hot sauce, any good hot sauce. Now we're gonna just mash it around like this. We put it in the refrigerator. You can put it in a bag in the refrigerator overnight and then it goes on to the smoke pit with a little pecan wood and this actually is going to smoke for how many how long does it smoke for i would say two to four hours sometimes a little depending on the thickness of your uh garfish and we use like. this for seasoning meat for gumbo for Oh, I wish you could smell the smoke. Anyway, y'all, keeping Native American traditions alive, that's what happens right here in Dulac, Louisiana. No one better than Janie Luster and all of the home of people who make sure that we realize the importance of this wonderful nation. I'm so happy to be here cooking with you today. So, you want to taste it? Thank you. Hmm? There you go. Look. Oh, look how nice and white that uh -huh. meat is, huh? I can see this in, uh, in gumbo or beans. Mm. Opposition vegetables. Mm -hmm. I bet this Buffalo New York native who now lives in Chicago never in a million years thought he would be spending so much time in South Louisiana. And I can guarantee you he never thought he'd see garfish stew on any of his restaurant menus. He does now. Y'all, I tell you, I am on the dock here at White Oak Plantation and the lake's behind me and my best buddy's in front of me right here. Rick Tremonto, my partner, and not only the restaurant industry, but uh, our heads are hooked together in food right here. How you doing, Rick? I'm great. Man, thanks for coming. Man, huh? are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> this ain't bad cooking, huh? <laughs> Not bad for a couple of kids, huh? Well, you know, both of us from the school of hard knocks, huh? That's right. This isn't a bad place Not to end up. Place. Huh? <laughs> We've had a lot of fun, though. Uh, you're from, church, well, from Buffalo, New York, ended up in Chicago, cooked all over the world. And then ended up, you and I, doing restaurants here, Louisiana. We've got another one coming up in Mississippi. and uh, But you have really enjoyed the swamp lands here, Man, too. Man, you know, it's like the real swamp people. It's like <laughs> living the dream here. <laughs> this is it. We've had fun. We've been frogging. We've been alligator hunting. We've been turtle hunting. We've done, done it all. And now you've educated me on the gar. On the gar. Not, this is the alligator all about gar. The gar. Y'all, take a look at this piece of meat right here, the, the skin. I would trim this off, but feel the texture of this beautiful white meat of the alligator going now you've seen a little bit of it already because we were out with the Homa Indian Nation and of course we did some smoke guard tasso and all of that but now I'm going to show you the way we used to eat it in our own little uh, cabin we're going to make a garfish stew with French boulettes the, 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 the yeah just the meatballs of the gar Beautiful. and I'll show you how to do that but look Rick I have a nice dark brown roux here why don't we kind of throw all my onions you can just pick up the whole thing and I'll slide it on in there of course everything begins with the trinity y'all little onions celery, bell pepper, garlic all going into the uh, uh, into the pot and of course Rick in your in your travels around the world I mean have you seen exotic foods like uh, the dishes of Louisiana that you've experienced here in, in any other other country? Never, never and 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 you get to make boots from the skin. I mean, never get to see that either. And bags. But no, this is incredible. I mean, it's such it's such a world in its own, and it's just a spectacular education. No, well, well, no, it, it is. And I think everybody cooking here for the first time, that's a little uh, tomato sauce, a little Worcestershire sauce, a little hot sauce, of course. Of course. And of course, that's going to go right into it. And Rick, you can put that on the back table right now. We won't need that anymore. I'm going to stir that around. And of course, I'm gonna add now the stock because we boiled the garfish, and you can stir that up on there a little bit. Just mix that roux in with the, we actually boil the meat, y'all, in, uh, 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 in this water, and of course with onion, celery, wow. carrots, and we're creating that nice stew, you see that? Now I have some already done up here, so that's kind of where we got to this point. Now let's uh, look over here. You, you have to see this. This is the meat. Look how tender this meat is once you, once you boil it for about an hour. See how it just falls apart? And I I'm love how flaky it is. Just flakes apart. Now give me that over there and I'm going to pour it all in and you can mix it real fast uh, because we're going to make the, uh, uh, the balls, uh, the little boulettes, we're going to put melted butter into it because the meat is so lean, you want to have a little fat. A couple of wonderful 
uh, egg yolks into that as well. Beautiful. And then, Rick, now we're going to put in all of the seasoning because the stew has the seasoning. But, of course, we're going to put all of that in uh, as, as well. So that. we're going to um, – um, this is just adding to your Cajun experience. You know <laughs> what I mean? Now, you've been in Louisiana now, what, when did we this open is, this? Is, this is going on, believe it or not, year four. Because yeah. we had a year <laughs> – we had a year of playtime, if you remember. <laughs> yeah, we call it playtime. As, as we were taking Rick on his uh, on his education, we call it education. So now, y'all, we're going to take this and just kind of uh, uh, mix it all together. You can add breadcrumbs uh, to it. Season it, of course, a little salt, a little pepper, a little granulated garlic. There you go, a little green onions. And you're going to just kind of mash them nicely into a little ball. You get your hands in there, just kind of. And y'all, I have some done. I want to show you what it looks like. Well, I think I have a plate here. And you can just make a, a little ball right there while I do this. You keep going, because we have a lot of people to feed. Huh? <laughs> now, this is just almost, this would be the Cajun version of spaghetti and meatballs, but we're going to do, <laughs> we're gonna do it on top of rice. Uh, can you smell that? Oh, huh? my God. Ah, uh, look at that. We're going to put, uh, since you're visiting, I'm going to give you a second one. I get an extra one. You get an extra one right there. Like and Mama's you, beating meatballs. <laughs> Beautiful. But the only difference is you had to fight an alligator <laughs> guard to get it. Huh? Now I'm going to just kind of take a little bit of that coloring off the side. Put a little parsley on it. And, y'all, that's the way it's done. Just, um, just two old Cajun boys on the dock in Louisiana. Just nothing to it, huh? We're going to be back in a minute. We have another great dish to cook for you, and you don't want to miss that. If you think this is good, just hang on. It's nice. Uh, look at them. Man, these balls are really nice. Beautiful. Huh? I got a taste. Yeah, go ahead and taste that right there on the rice, huh? Give us a yeah, that. Hmm? What's that taste like? Tastes like the camp? Believe it. <laughs> You know, I have to give it to my buddy Rick. He took our humble Louisiana Shoopy caviar and put it on a pedestal, a real pedestal where it belongs. I'm in heaven. The best place a chef could possibly be. Between two caviar masters <laughs> and, see this little fish tail right here? Now see that? That's about 600 bucks an ounce. Nice. Imperial caviar, but I'm gonna put a lid back on it, okay? Because That's I don't want anybody to eat $300 <laughs> a bite, Jeff. Y'all, I have John. I, John Burke is kind of the king of caviar in Louisiana. Of course, you know Rick Tramato and John. I want to talk about how you got involved in processing Louisiana caviar and what it means, but we have a little exercise going here. Rick, oh, yeah. you're, you're going to do your famous caviar yeah. staircase. Tell us about you that. You know, as, as Aretha Franklin says, respect, right? <laughs> respect. That's what caviar deserves. It, it, I, I'm in awe of it. I've always has been, and I always wanted to not mess with it too much. I wanted to give it the respect and the elevation that it needed. So when I was at True, we were trying to think of different ways to elevate and respect caviar. We worked with some beautiful glass people out of Chicago, and we developed the caviar staircase. And it's just absolutely, look, I said I was in heaven a minute ago. Look at the staircase they have. Right. Now, what do you have on it so, so far? So I have some, uh, some of the traditional garnitures, some creme fraiche, some capers, some red onion, a little yellow egg, a little white egg, and then we get to select and play now, now with you have all, all you have all of the options here on caviar now john how did you first get into deciding that there was a fish in louisiana and what fish is it anyway that right. would produce a real high quality caviar well i found a little cajun couple down the bayou who had discovered that when they applied a caviar process to the row of the shoe pig now that's the shoe pig the right there shoe pig this is considered a trash fish on wildlife and fisheries list of fish or sport fish underutilized species utilized and then trash fish this was a trash fish. <laughs> so we took this trash fish and made Louisiana's foremost seafood delicacy. Now, now, now the caviar of that, you have another fish right here. Right, this is a sturgeon. This is your traditional caviar producing species since Aristotle's time. It's a 200 million year old genoid class of That's why fish. it looks like a dinosaur, right? Right, yeah, the I same as the shoe pig. So, so that's this is a cousin. That's 200 million, 200 million, million, million years old. 200 million year old. Now fish. let's talk yeah. about the caviar. Now this okay. is the caviar of the shoe peak right here, and I'm right. using this wonderful little spoon here. You see that this little? This is what we call uh, Cajun caviar. This is Cajun caviar, and this is from that fish right. done in the typical process. So Rick, you might want to take yeah. some of this. Uh, and here you have, I love this one. This is the catfish. Right. I can't this imagine is something that. new that we just came up with in the last couple of years, and it's really started to, to take off. It's a nice catfish roe. It's a nice yellow egg, great flavor. 
It, uh, it plates up well. Um, everything that we produced this past season of catfish caviar has been bought out by the restaurants in New Orleans. Oh, wow. Everything oh, that we can wow. do. Mm -hmm. Right. Really so delicious. that's a new one that's coming on. A couple of years ago, we came up with the ghost pepper caviar, which is our regular shoe pit caviar, and I discovered a way to infuse the roe when we're processing it into caviar right. with just a tiny bit of the ghost pepper, which is the hottest pepper on earth, no, no, enough to get the no. flavor of the pepper without the burn. Is it really hot? So, so no, it's not. So you're not going to run for the milk carton, John. <laughs> and um, and you can taste the flavor of the caviar, and then on the tail end is when you pick up that ghost pepper. Better? <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Thank God for this, huh? Yeah. Now, some uh, of these other caviars that you have well, spread around Well, you have the salmon here. caviar here. Everybody see, you can pick these up in your local store. You have right. the salmon, the white fish. Correct. And these are all caviars that Blind people have. Fish had. Yeah, that, that's right. And Rick, what have you chosen? Yeah, I chose the ch the chew pick. I chose the the uh, trout and the salmon. Now, I want to show you this. Now, now as a caviar expert, this is, I just absolutely love this caviar here. And Rick, I'm gonna just put a little bit of the Cajun caviar right on top of your little blini nice. right there. And what is the difference basically between these two in your opinion? It, what, what? Well, they just come from different species. And so the, uh, so the sturgeon have gotten so rare around the earth um, that the price of the sturgeon caviar have just really skyrocketed. Yeah, and, Our, and so now, you, now we do have a, a, a wonderful uh, a, a just great, alternative. Right. right, and it's not as expensive. People really love the flavor of it. You can put it on the menu. You can put it on the on your table for a oh, and I can put for it a your, party. And I can put it in your <laughs> hand oh, right there. I put it there. in my hand all the time. Thank the, you, Rick. When, 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 when John Burke discovered mm. that you could produce a high quality premium caviar from a 200 million year old fish, exactly from that Probably, probably family near right, it. Cousin. Anyway, yeah, cousin, we had a great industry here, or should I say, he had a great industry here. Right. And I was one of the first ones to use it. You I'm were, very proud for of 28 that. years, almost 30 years now, yeah, Chef, that we've been together years, huh? using huh? our from from caviar. From trash um, fish. <laughs> from a trash fish. <laughs> 30 years and cheers. I didn't have it. Cheers. Hey, cheers, cheers. And where's my blend? And look how beautiful. Look at the staircase, y'all, how gorgeous <laughs> this is. Can you imagine? That was delicious. Oh, Rick. you like Thanks. that? Oh, huh? I did. Y'all, I tell you master. what, we're, we're, we're going to eat. We have some little uh, treats right here. And we're going to continue to eat. And when you come back, uh, this will be gone. But we have another dish for you. I promise you, it's going to be good. How is that? Oh. <laughs> Salty dogs are experienced sailors who have spent a lot of time on the water. We have a lot of salty dogs here in the Bayou State. Heck, after this series, I think I'm a salty dog. All right, everybody, we have our salty dog here. Nothing better with uh, caviar than a little bit of salty dog. And, uh, a couple of other great dishes have come to the table, but what's the season? Is there a season for harvesting the caviar in Louisiana? Uh, there is. We harvest from about the 1st of December through mid-February, and that's when the eggs are the largest in the fish, and it, we can produce a nice sized berry for mm -hmm. caviar. And once they spawn, then we want that fish swimming for next year. So you as soon as they start spawning, then we cut and off the And does the amount of caviar you harvest get you through the year just about? It will. It varies, kind of like crawfish. You'll have good seasons and bad seasons, and so it cycles. And look here, uh, Rick, now you just have a little plate of burrata and yeah. caviar, right? And those two, um, uh, those, that burrata cheese is a great marriage with caviar, yeah, right? fat and the salt, it's magic. Uh, and y'all, always with caviar, you might want to have a little grab lox, a little salmon off to the side. It's absolutely fantastic. So we have... The caviar staircase, all of the caviar, of course, uh, the Imperial with a little vodka shooter right there, and all of the accompaniments that go so well. well great uh, Christmas party, New Year's party. This is a beautiful uh, layout, Chef. Uh, uh, just a party on the dock right here. Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Cheers. Oh, wow. Rick, you can, uh, hey, there you go right there. Anyway, y'all, John, thank you so much for being oh, with welcome, us today. Chef. Rick, thanks so much for doing this. <laughs> you just keep on eating that. <laughs> Y'all, thanks for stopping by the camp today. And when it comes to fresh fish and seafood, there's no place like Louisiana Sportsman's Paradise. So see you next time for another tasty edition of Hooks, Lies, and Alibis. Enjoy and <laughs> cheers. There's, cheers to y'all. 
Hooks, Lies, and Alibis is underwritten by Visit Baton Rouge, a longtime partner of this series and LPB. The capital city offers southern hospitality, cultural attractions, food, shopping, and fun. Information at visitbatonrouge.com. And by Audubon, Louisiana, working to conserve, restore, and protect important places for birds and people since 1924. And by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. For a copy of John Fulce's cookbooks and more, call the number on your screen or visit www.lpb.org slash Fulce.